Hello, and welcome to Dragon Riders Around the Watch D&D Talk. I am Dorgan Kishu, Paladin and Dragon Rider. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Um, yeah, just popped on, kind of, sort of have a topic this time, but just, you know, hoping maybe we'll get somebody on, some people, or one person even on chat, to just, uh, it's a brand new stream, so I'm not, like, pushing, expecting a lot of people, or any people necessarily, but I am wanting to, you know, get going and start to, to do these regularly, so I've been doing that. Yeah, a couple things. Uh, right now, to be honest with you, right now, today, I'm just feeling like, man, I want to play D&D. Um, I have, like I said, I've, uh, I've got a couple different campaigns. I run the one for my for Kate, uh, which we've been run, playing since 2018. That one we've been playing every two or three weeks lately. Um, nothing scheduled. It's just kind of when when it, when, it, when it calls to us. Um, and um, cool thing, we'll either play an hour. Some of the times we'll just set up. And, but other times we'll play like for literally six hours. Right? So three to six hours. So um, it's it's awesome. It's good. Um, a lot going on with that campaign because uh, she's about to turn 27 <clears throat> any day. And um, the next campaign was the one that, that she runs that is on hold right now. So I'm not sure what, where that's what's going on with that. And then the third campaign is the one that I run on Discord. That's every couple weeks. We're going to be playing that. Uh, what's today? Today is Thursday, so we'll be playing that in 10 days. We'll be continuing that. I am looking forward to that. Um, like we'll be going into, like I said, to, into Corium, and we got a lot a lot of things going on with that. I talked about that in, a, a couple, I think, a couple of episodes back, if you want to hear about that campaign. Um, beyond that, um, like I said, really excited about, at some point, streaming on here, a new campaign, but that is very much kind of just um uh, in transition right now and uh other than that um i thought i'd give a little bit of my history some people that that know me um my friends on from the dnd twitter will already have heard this at different points over the last few years that i've you know, done different things whether it's a vlog or a tweet or um different things yeah but a little bit of history of me with dnd um i wanted to play dnd from a very young age um I don't know the first time I heard of it. I know that my mom um, had a couple friends uh, and, and the husband of the two friends played with several other friends of my mom. And anyway, they were they were guys. Geez, I don't know what how old they were. Uh, now I'm thinking about it. I guess they're probably in their 30s or 40s. But anyway, they used to, I guess, go up in the back room and just play all weekend, you know, for hours upon hours. It just sounded like the coolest thing to me. I was just a kid. And uh, like I said, I always wanted to play when I was a kid, but um, I didn't know anybody that was playing. I was very shy also. I didn't hardly, when I was at school, I didn't really talk much. The only, only time I'd talk was like at home to my brother mostly and my mom. But yeah, so it ended up, I knew, I, and then when I come across people who play d and uh, they were kind of... Um, People that spent, you know, a good portion of the session, at least a third of the session, arguing about rules, and really came down to, you know, a battle of like who was the smartest, and it was just kind of um, it was not a good thing. It wasn't something I wanted to be part of. So I finally realized um, when I was about seventeen that the only way that I would ever play D and D is if I ran it. Whenever it came to board games, I was always the guy that read the rules. You know, it was like, you know, you got to read the rules. You don't have to, but it, it, usually people don't get to playing the game until somebody reads the rules. I was usually that guy. I wasn't much of a reader. Most uh, Mostly loved watching movies, but but when it came to, to um, learning rules, reading rules, I was I was patient at that, and I was good with that. Um, but so when it came to doing D&D, because I wasn't a big reader, I didn't start with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I got the basic rules because it was a smaller book, to be honest with you. Uh, but I wanted to play D and D, and so I learned the basic rules. I started running a uh, group for my brother and his girlfriend, and then a fr and then my brother's best friend also joined in at some point. Um, and then I added expert rules was the blue box, like I said, blue box. Like I said, a lot of you guys probably heard this. And then I had a, uh, and my, my brother and I had a uh, guy that we knew that worked with my mom that would, played a lot of D and D, but he did a lot of demons and devils and demons and devils because he also did, um, uh, I don't remember what it was called. It was uh, um, Warcraft or um, World of Warcraft. No, it was um, I'm trying to remember what. Bottom line is, is there was, a, was another uh, RPG system he also played. And we played. I was a player with him, and I played a D half demon and. Anyway, his girlfriend was worried about him, thought he was a little bit played too much and was into the demons and devils. I think it was his girlfriend that was worried about him. This is a long time ago. 
So he gave away all his advanced Dungeons and Dragons books and he gave them to me and my brother. We got like, I don't know how many of these books, four, four, five, six, seven of them. Um, so then I started to blend in some of the advanced Dungeons and Dragons rules. And a couple of years later, he started playing, wanted to play D&D again. He came back, he's like, I want all my books back. I'm like, sorry. Um, so I guess we had already become attached to him at that point. And, you know, now I look at it, oh, maybe we should have given back. But then back then, though, it wasn't like that. Um, you know, they gave, he gave them to us and then we got attached to them. So... <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, so then uh, I ran this group for them, for, I think for a couple of years, and um, it was awesome. I think we only got up to like level eight, maybe, um, and uh, the rules were a little bit different, but the main thing for me with, uh, with I love dungeon mastering, never knew I was going to love that. I love creating the worlds, I love running, doing all the voices, uh, I know not everybody does voices, but I really enjoy that, and um, uh, it was, it was, a, it was just a lot of fun. So that kind of went away though. And then it was just like, to be honest with you, it was like real life. I wasn't pursuing my dreams uh, the, that I wanted to do. And I was just working, doing a job for the next, you know, whatever, eight, 10 years or whatever. Um, became pretty unhappy. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. But uh, my point though is that I um, then uh, I was in, hey, what's up? Is that Alan? What's up, man? How are you? I see you uh, online a lot. I see you also talking about taking breaks and things. So I guess you maybe you got a lot going on in your life. What is going on? <laughs> what are you doing, man? Are you doing any? Uh, Alan is a he uh, is a friend, a, D &D, a Twitter D and D guy that I'm friends with, who also is a, the artist for the um, for the module, the one module that I did uh, publish in 2019. Oh my god, dude! I'm so sorry to hear about that. Sounds like he had a, a bit of a surgery. I hope you're doing okay. Last Sunday, good lord, man. Wow, I hope there's not a lot of pain involved. I hope everything went okay for you. Yo, these glasses are messed up, by the way. I didn't even realize I've worn these. I don't know if I've worn them broken online. I'm missing an arm, so they're going all crooked. Healing up. Yeah. Wow. How are you? Um, what about D&D? &D? Let's, uh, let's get right to the subject. <laughs> How about D&D? &D? Are you playing in and are you running some uh, campaigns? Are you in some campaigns? What are you doing with D&D? &D? I'm just going to leave this on even though it's broken. Whoops. Okay, I'll be right back, Alan. Mute this really quick. So I gotta call this person back. It'll only take a second. Stick around. Sorry about that, man. That's the first time that's happened during my stream that I actually got a call I had to take. Anyway, okay. Reading, <coughs> excuse me, reading what you said now, Alan. Uh, playing in a game now, Galavant the Satyr Ranger. Nice. Love Rangers. Have yet to play, be a player Ranger, though. I've done around a lot of NPC Rangers that I really liked. Let's see. Prepping to run a game in a new part of my world. Airwind called Drune. A nice. First time running a desert campaign. <clears throat> That's awesome. I uh, 
in my material world, in my, my yeah, in my material plane, uh, one of the main continent that that uh, that we have Kate started on a few years back, the bottom, the southern part of it was all desert. It was all um, it wasn't mapped out at all. And I ran some um, some of the campaign in there early on in that campaign, including finding a, a temple under the sand and dealing with all of that. And that was, uh, well, that was a blast. You know, I used to, you know, I, uh, um, years ago, um, like after I, after I, cause I, I, I played on expert rules and basic rules and with some advanced, but I purchased a second edition of AD&D and I never played it, but I bought, um, Dark Sun. I bought Dark Sun. Um, and I, I think I've heard that they may, you know, they may, uh, do it in 5e or, but um, maybe, maybe that's just what people want or some people want. But I never, I think I made a character in Dark Sun, but I don't think I ever ran it or played it. I kind of shifted away from D&D, but the desert thing can be very cool. Yeah, it's, um, boy, that temple that I had underground was loaded, multi-levels. I think I found some map online that I used for that and um, had some really cool um, pictures and stuff like that, but. So who are the players or how many players you got going with uh, with the desert one? Jesus. He says, uh, yeah, Droon ruled by dragon lords, basically half dragon, undead mummy lords. Good Lord. Yeah, that's. I definitely had my first mummy lord ever that I've ever ran as a DM in that campaign, and that was a really cool fight. I think I had its heart in a side chamber in a box, and if they, because I think when you kill it, they come back or something. And uh, but I think if you kill the heart, it, it won't come back after that next kill. Something like that. And I'm assuming that was part of the design of the <clears throat> of the creature. I don't think I came up with that, but because I only ran it once, so I can't say for sure. But it was really cool. And they man, they they found that damn heart. It was like, yeah, it shocked me a little bit. But three players, your girlfriend, another couple, they're close friends. We started playing a per. <clears throat> Excuse me, playing in-person games again. Yeah, that's. I know I was lucky with the pandemic because I was just my main campaign was the one that I was running for Kate. And she's here, so um, we. I didn't have to, but my uh, my other games have been online, so it wasn't really pandemic-wise. It didn't really affect my. But I know for a lot of people, they either stopped playing until they could play in person again, or they start playing online. Is the mix, but. Uh, these glasses are terrible. I'm trying to remember, and I use um, I have this other this other um, continent that does. It has elder dragons, and it has. It used to be ruled by dragons, and then they kind of were battled battled away, and and then the men took over man. And then they fight amongst each other, of course. So then when that was getting in a really bad way in this campaign, I run for my girlfriend when it started to get really bad, the men were going to destroy each other. The dragons saw it as a moment where they could retake the continent. But she, Kate, got in there with her group and tried to make some peace amongst the men, and uh, which backed off the dragons. Dragons are... I love dragons. I mean, I know a lot of people do. For me, D and D, my favorite are dragons and orcs. I know it's, I know it's not. It's orcs are just awesome. That's why I've made a lot of hybrid orcs because I want them at higher level play as well. We tried to play online, but it felt pretty different. I don't know. I'm looking to work on my streaming setup so I can play. Discord seems pretty easy though. Yeah. I've, um. I'm not super familiar with Discord, but I am using Discord to uh, run uh, my uh, my five person campaign every cu couple weeks, and I love Discord. Um, I haven't figured out all the maps. Stuff. I mean, like bringing in. I mean, I haven't figured it out. Bottom line is, the bottom line is, I wanna. I, 
they liked talking to kind of you talking a little bit and chat during the games and as long as it wasn't like super distracting or anything it was just funny and so i kind of liked that element of it so i because i've been on roll 20 uh kate runs a run a roll 20 campaign and so i thought about using roll 20 and i I had never DM'd with Roll20 until two or three months ago when I ran Frost Realm. I ran my module for the first time on Roll20 for some people I met on TikTok, and it went really well. But with Discord, what's been nice is that I've been, you know, I'm able to uh, put in music, um, you know, music from um, from YouTube. The way it works is you just there's a there's a little uh, software that you use where you can. Um, just tell it to play, you write down the address or write down something and it bring, and it'll tag, tag into anything on YouTube really. And I'm not streaming that game. So I'm able to do that. I don't have to worry about copyrights or whatever with the music. Um, roll 20, let's see. Roll 20 has a bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Roll 20. Yeah. I mean, and I, and the thing about it is I can learn this stuff. Once I learn it, I know it, but I just don't, it's hard for me to take the time to thoroughly learn these things. With Roll20, all I basically did is I had maps, I uploaded my maps, and um, I got a bunch of generic tokens from from the site, ones that were free, and just kind of chose some for the people that were in the group. And then um, I didn't even upload my own or any of that. I know that's all easy and possible. And then um, I also learned how you can you know darken the map so that you can see the whole map but the player can't see it so i just used a, a few of the key features and that's really all i needed um and it worked really well yeah those uh those uh, i think you saw when i was posting about that but yeah i well 20 is okay i'm actually uh i'm curious about that other one what is it called fantasy realms or something like that I wish I had the patience to really learn these things, and maybe I will at some point. Especially if I start, if and when I start streaming games online, I'm probably going to be, you know, slowly upgrading as I go and learning things as I go. Um, I may start out real basic at first, but yeah. But OBS has been cool so far. I've been using OBS to stream this, and um, I don't know a lot about this either, but I. I did learn the basics, and so here I am. Obviously, like this, uh, this, this layout around me is is uh, the, well. The picture is from somebody who gave me permission, or actually, I think I, I, I think I donated money, money to them as well. But they they allowed me to use this picture in my next in the, in the uh, campaign adventure module I'm working on now, which is kind of on hold just for the moment because I need to work with an editor. Uh, anyway, this background picture is they allowed me to use it in my my next module. But other than that picture, like the writing and, and, you know, within the black squares, it's all very, I used paint, you know, I didn't, I didn't even use, um, Adobe, uh, I'm not even, I don't even use that. So I, I can make it all look so much better. But problem is if I just wait till I learn everything that I wait, make it the way I want it, I know that I'll, I may never even do it. So I mean, that's not, so it's okay because mainly I want to get on here and I want it to be functional and then I'll make it look better as I go away. There's really no one way to do all this stuff. Let's see. The cool thing is, as long as the adventure is fun, people don't care about setup much. They just want to play. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's exactly like you said. You know, he says, "Hey, man, you're doing the thing. Looks good to me." That's. It's kind of like where I'm at. I just, I'm just getting online, and I will have the evolution happen online instead of waiting around because I know the way I am and I know that I won't just learn everything perfect. And then, um, yeah, cause producing, I mean, I think producing things is, I, I don't mind producing things and, and I can do it, but, um, I just kind of want to just enjoy myself right now. And, uh, producing can be a big thing to do a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, with this D&D &D talk, um, Kate and I have come on and talked about D&D &D before um, on Twitch. We, I used a whole backward system of doing it. I used the uh, – Twitch has a has a thing that you can use to stream, and then I mixed it with Zoom. So we were on here on Zoom, and um, we would just talk about D&D. &D and we also played chess on here uh, several times, uh, some kind of – but, but, um, but really it was kind of all getting our – dipping our toe and just – 
at some point hoping that we might actually stream on here, stream games. Um, um, you know, and we might, like I said, we're probably just going to, uh, we're probably going to stream just one player thing at first. We're either, um, I run a, a campaign for her or she runs one for me, or we may rotate between that, but you know, um, I would love to evolve at some point to have an actual group on here, but I'm just kind of slowly moving into it, but I don't know why it's just really fun to stream. I'm not a person that likes a lot of attention. I'm more of like, I'm a writer. I'm a behind the scenes kind of person. Um, but I do, I love D and D and I love Twitch and D and streaming and all this is, it just feels fun. It's fun to do it. So it was enough drive to get me on here. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, your thing as well. I know you've been talking about getting it going. You'll probably have it in better shape than mine, especially since you're an artist, you'll probably have, but maybe you won't. Maybe you'll do what I'm doing. Maybe you'll just do what you need to do to get online. We shall see, but I will check it out for sure. I want to see, I want to see it. I want to come check it out. I will. Yeah, I know when I um, said you'd love to roll dice with me sometime, you know, when I, when I first started working with you, when we were first figuring, getting the drawings going for the module, I thought this guy would be awesome to play D and D with. And you seemed, you had a giant imagination. Obviously you're an artist, you draw, but you, you, you had a lot of ideas about creatures and you seemed like you were just had a big world going on in your head about D and D. So yeah, it would be cool to be either uh, be in one, uh, one another's uh, campaign or, or be side by side battling with someone else running it. So maybe we will get that opportunity some point. We're both kind of aiming in the direction of streaming. So, yeah, I, I with this this with this around the watch, I just kind of I tend to have a topic. So you know, and uh, I was just talking about in my history a little bit. But let's see, has Kate ever? <clears throat> Thought about DMing, yes. Um, it's funny about Kate, the way she got into Dungeons and Dragons, because she had been, her brother tried to get her involved and she had no interest. And, um, and when he, and when last time that she, that, that he actually had her in a game, uh, set, I don't know how many years ago it was, really they just kind of helped her, gave her a character and then that was it. And they all played and they didn't really, I don't think they helped her. They, they just kind of got, and she just kind of ended up not doing anything. What ended up happening though is when I found out about 5e in 2017, I found out about 5e and I wanted to get back into D&D &D, and I had, a, I had a guy run a group. I had a guy run a group. I wanted to be a player at first before I could learn the 5e rules before I DM'd because I'd always DM'd in the past. So this, but this guy uh, that I knew got, we had friends and we got on and we played a campaign and I had Kate hang out with us when we did it. And then everybody kept wanting her to play. And since she finally did, she took the barbarian route, you know, she picked a big old barbarian that didn't have to talk much, you know, because different people enter this game in different ways. Sometimes they'll give a fighter or, or a barbarian, keep it simple in a certain way. And, um, and just, uh, that's what she did, but her, um, she fell in love with it. And that kind of game went away at the end of 2017. And then I was really missing D and D. And then she asked me if I'd run a campaign for her Been running it for her for three years. And a little over two years ago, she said she wanted to run a campaign, but she wanted to do it with more than one player. So she didn't want to just run one for me. So then I found a buddy on Twitter and asked him if he wanted to do it. And so she, to answer your question, she's been, she was, she's been running a campaign for a little over a couple of years now. Um, first was just me and him and this guy as a player. And then we added a couple of other friends as players. That current campaign is on hold right now, but she has dungeon mastered. Let's see, that's what helped my girlfriend get into it. The math was easier for, sorry for the background noises. I think they're cutting down trees. Let's see, that's what helped my girlfriend get into it. The math was easier for her. The math was easier for her wrapper uh, head around, yeah. Now she loves it as much as me. Yeah, that's awesome. I, uh, wow, I hope that doesn't come across really loud on here. I have no idea, my, my mic might really be picking that up. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I mean, dungeon mastering, I, like I said, I kind of got in, I got into it because I had to, if I wanted to play, I didn't know anybody who was playing it and, and I really wanted to play. And then I fell in love with it. I love telling the stories and creating the worlds and doing the voices and being all the characters. It's, 
Um, but I have hit the same point that I think a lot of DMs that just do nothing but DM, and that's where you want to actually just be a player. And um, how loud is that, Alan? Just so I know, like I'm one through ten, because I can always change rooms further away from that. Anyway, um, what the heck was I saying? Oh yeah, so yeah, I uh, I I ran a big campaign when I was in my, a teenager, and a big campaign when I was um, when I say big, it actually only went to level eight, but um, a full campaign level in my teenager, and a campaign when I was in my late twenties. Is that a cow? <laughs> Is what a cow? Is the, the sound a cow? Because they're running saws out there cutting trees. <laughs> yeah, so um, in Kate's campaign, I actually got to be... I love paladins. Dorgan, the name Dorgan is is, is a pseudo name for my D&D twi Twitter. Dorgan Kishu, which is a paladin dragon... Sorry, paladin and dragon rider, which I've never played Dorgan, and I've never played a paladin dragon rider before, so... You know, I got things I got to get done, but then when I I need to play that is what I mean. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, but in the 2017 campaign, I was a paladin. When I played online before uh, as a player, I've also been a paladin. So, um, in her campaign, I made a fighter, but he died and was re reincarnated, and so I then made him a fighter paladin. So kind of got back to that paladin thing again. I'm actually thinking. I don't know. I kind of want to play a warlock. If I, if we, if I, if she streams me on here, I might want to play a warlock. Now she's played a warlock. That's her. That's her level twenty six character is a warlock, one level of sorcerer, I think, and um, or uh, yeah, sorcerer, I think, I think, or wizard. Um, but that would that would be amazing. That'd be awesome to play a warlock. There's so many races. There's so many classes that I want to play. Um. I just, Paladin is my favorite, but I, I, I really want to play a ranger. Um, I love Aragorn and I, the thing about me when I've ran campaigns is I run NPC group members. So they are like in the group, they don't make a lot of the big, big decisions, but they're there to support the group. And, uh, so I played this, uh, ranger, uh, when I first, when my first campaign as a dungeon master, I ran a Paladin that was in their group and, uh, kind of inspired by Aragorn and, but I would love to full blown play that kind of ranger someday, but there's so many classes that I want to play. Paladins are cool. Artificer has been my favorite since it's come out, but I used to play bards. Yeah, I've, Artificer um, it sounds very cool. And I would love to play a bard, man. I've never played a bard either. I mean, I just haven't been a player all that much. So I that's another care. Bard is another one where I'm, God, that would be so much fun to be a bard. Yeah, so this is your this is his first time running a ranger and he loves the archery theme. Yeah, I uh in Kate's group, she has I've run seven group members. She doesn't travel with all of them all the time, especially now that she's at a higher level. She generally travels with just a couple. And actually a lot of times it's just with her with her bat with her uh, bodyguards that um she has because she's kind of she stirred up a lot of things. She's uh blocked and defeated a lot of evil and so she's got a lot of enemies, so she can't her her group members want her to have if she doesn't want to travel do something with them she wants they want her to you generally have bodyguards with her it's so funny her um her bodyguards are it's interesting too her bodyguards the first one is a uh, drow assassin that tried to kill one of the characters in her group at some point and uh she tore him up she would um yeah she i think she killed him and brought him back just so she could kill him again I mean, it was it was a really bad <laughs> thing going down, and it's ironic because in, in the long term, though, she tends to Kate's warlock tends to operate from the middle. She makes friends on the dark, on the light, and um, down the road, this one of her bodyguards is now this drow assassin that tried to kill one of her group members at one point, and the other guy is another assassin who tried to capture or kill her. She defeated them both, and um, and now they both are her bodyguards. Okay, so let's see. The new Fey Wanderer subclass from Tasha's 
give the ranger some bard-like elements fit well with the satyr race. Yeah, very interested in Tasha's. I need I need to get that book. I haven't been buying a lot of books. Well, that's not true. I bought a couple books. I bought um, let's check. I bought from Cawood Publishing was a um, third party of uh, independent publisher makes great stuff. Um, and I've been, uh, I'm making a new realm that I'm going to use with this online streaming. And I've been using his creatures to fill some of the cities. I also own two more of his in PDF form, uh, for the fey creatures. And then, um, I'm just drawing a blank on the third one. Um, anyway, and then there's Tomb of Beasts. I got tired just using the monsters from the monster manual. Granted, I make a lot of my own, you know, I create creatures, but I just wanted another thing to draw from. So I got the Tomb of Beasts from Kobold Press, and this thing's gigantic, and it's awesome. And let's see, what did you say here? Oh, yeah, Andrew is friends of my on my Facebook. Travis Hansen's art is so fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a... Uh, there's something kind of magical about his art. Uh, definitely creates a, it's definitely a unique style. And, um, but yeah, I am, I've been talking with Andrew. Yeah. We're friends. We, 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 uh, we have not played D and D or anything like that, but we, uh, I try to support his stuff cause I really love his stuff. Yeah. But so this tomb of beasts and this monsters of the city, I'm incorporating into the new realm that I've created for my online streaming. I fortunately I haven't, I haven't completed the, this realm. Uh, it's a single continent plane, I think, at least at this point. But I have uh, I actually got to test it a little bit. My brother, I'd love to play with my brother. We're only fifteen months apart, and I was very close to him growing up. And but he's lived eight hours north of me for a very long time, and he's just never. And he's not a computer guy, so we just don't play online. Um, but he had a lot of time off. Uh, first pandemic but then because he had some physical stuff go on and the last handful of weeks before he went back to work which was he went back to work uh, last week i think he wanted to finally play some D&D, and we do it on the phone i just put it on speaker phone but i got to test my new realm with him and uh that was really fun and I, I would love and i would i might try to get him i might someday when i do a group group stream he's the kind of person i would want on here he's actually a an actor, not a professional. He's a theater actor. I mean, he he preferred, prefer, uh, pursued acting for a very short time when he was younger. And I think he he really he we, we, he talked me into joining a theater group, and I was shy as f. And I I really love theater now. And uh, but he after about doing about you know seven eight plays, he realized he wasn't going to be discovered. And I feel like he gave up pursuing acting. He just I don't know if he didn't have the patience or whatever. But um, but I, I love theater. Yeah, it's definitely in my writing. The the whole uh, Shakespeare is my favorite writer. I'm sure that a lot of people have the same favorite writer. But uh, I do love Shakespeare. Hamlet is my favorite play. So nothing original here. But um, I have been in the production of, of Hamlet in my late twenties. Uh, uh, one of the one of the guards, and uh, it was just the, the, it's, it was awesome to be part of it. But I don't know. I, was, I feel like I was I was talking about something. I think I got off. Oh yeah. So we got to practice. We got to use this land a little bit. This is nice because it helped me. Like if he would go, if he would go west, I would. And I haven't drawn it yet. I would have to draw it because he's heading there, and it helped me to build it. And that's a fun way to build it. But I did. I've been using Tomb of Beast to kind of set. I went through that book and I was making a list of the ones that I want and just kind of placing them in different places in this land. And then when we got into like a town or city, I would look at look at uh, Andrew's monsters of the city and uh, do some of that. So, um, yeah, that was we had we had a lot of fun. It got pretty dangerous pretty quick with my brother. He's kind of reckless, <laughs> not like um, um, what do they call it? Um, oh my gosh, my brain is not working this morning. I suppose I should have breakfast at some point. But anyway, um. What a hobo? What do they call it? Hobo killing or something like that? It's a thing where people just want to kill everywhere and everything. Yeah, he's not like that. He's just um. He okay? He played a. Here we go. I want to read what you said. The DM I play with uses alliteration in the game. Her NPCs are usually from literary sources. The last ones were from To Kill a Mockingbird. That's that works. I mean, really, you can take inspiration. 
you know what was cool with this uh, this this uh, group that I'm running on Discord a lot. Um, I uh, I decided to do a little bit of tribute, mix mix in some tribute. I uh, they I had them going to this place called the Third Plane, and they had to go to get the Serpent Tower, and it was completely inspired by the Serpent Tower in um, Conan the Barbarian. You know where they? I'm sure you saw Conan the Barbarian, the original, and where they the, the hit Conan and the archer and the girl. They go up that tower, and um, uh, I think that they're trying to steal some stuff from the tower. They, I think they had to end up killing the big snake and taking the big gem. Well, I mixed all that into this session. Um, I had uh, that same god was uh, had put a tower in this other plane. And they needed to go check it out, and they went there, and they went, and they had the drums, you know, like to say, like they were like had the, the girls and boys that they were going to uh, sacrifice, and they had the big snake at the bottom of the pit. What I did is with the big jewel, I made that one of the snake's eyes. They didn't know that, but they were going to get this jewel, and they didn't realize in order to get the jewel, they're going to have to kill this giant snake because it was one of its eyes. And um, so it was really awesome blending Conan because Conan is one of my favorite fantasy films. And one of my most inspiring in regards to like when I think of D&D or like if I want to watch a movie that's going to get me in the mood, Conan is one of my favorites. So, yeah, so that was um, that was really cool blending it. At. And because I'm using Discord and I could use any music from um, YouTube, I was able to use the Conan music. You know, I believe I was using it at that point. That's because I, 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 you know, it was a learning curve, but I think I was. Yeah, I, I, uh, but I believe I bought, brought in the uh, Conan the Barbarian soundtrack for that. Uh, part of the battle and um yeah so D, D is endless i'm definitely missing playing though because i'm just not playing a lot right now like i said kate's campaign's on hold and the one i do with her has been kind of every few weeks but it's kind of infrequent thankfully i've been playing this uh game every couple weeks but that i that recently took a month we we had different things come up we didn't play for a month so i get the guy guys start to get you know the twitch <laughs> to play or to run it so yeah but and i know there's a lot of rpgs i'm interested in lots of rpgs i've talked about this a little bit before i i, I backed a kickstarter um for a uh, cyberpunk rpg but it's based on the 5e system which i felt was cool because then you don't have to learn you know it's just a different setting right and i've never ran anything like that at all I, i've only ran D D. so um i was looking forward to actually early this year starting a cyberpunk campaign but the kickstarter because of the pandemic and different things that's been pushed off a long time by the time i get the book it'll probably have been a year since I backed it, so I'm waiting to. I have the core PDF book, but I really don't want to use the PDF rules. I don't want to read. I don't want to read a PDF. Like when I read a big old book about the game, I don't want to read it on a computer. I just don't like that. I don't. My eye. It doesn't just officially, uh, literally bother my eyes, but I just I like a book. I like books. You know, I'm pretty traditional when it comes to that. So I'm waiting for the book. And then I'm also getting a second book, which will include a couple other cities like New York and Tokyo, because I think the first book is, I don't know, is the first book maybe London or, or is it LA? I don't think it's LA. Yeah, so I am looking forward to doing the cyberpunk thing, and I'm wondering what that'll be like to, to be a game master on something like that. And oh, there goes those saws again. But um, yeah, yeah. Well, I should probably head off here a little bit. Um, when I don't have people, mainly I'm. Oh wait, I want to hear this. I'll stick around for a little bit longer. Let's see. Cyberpunk would be fun. I enjoyed space fantasy campaign called Dark Matters too. You know, um, when 2017, when they were running the, when they were running the campaign, and I was a player, and, and and Kate joined as a player. We started having issues with certain people showing up. So then the guy asked if he could run um, Starfinder. It purchased the Starfinder books, which is the sci-fi version of the uh, path, path, people that make Pathfinder. They also create, you may have heard them. Uh, you may have heard of Starfinder. They also do Starfinder, which is a sci-fi thing. So we created characters. We started doing that as a kind of in the interim of figuring out the D&D thing. And we loved it. It was awesome. But that ended very quickly and that group just kind of fell apart. So uh, I would love to play 
sci because my favorite thing, I mean, I love sci-fi and I love fantasy, so I would love to play in something like that. But running, running a cyberpunk thing, I'm curious about that because I've just, um, fantasy is so easy for me. It's so I've been doing it forever. I, I write it. I've, I, and I've played D&D &D since I was a teenager. And so it's all very natural. And as much as I love sci-fi, I've never ran it. So I'm, it'll probably be cool. I really looking for, I uh, really look forward to it. So, and I have no idea who the players will be for that, but, and I don't need to worry about it because these books just aren't here yet. Yeah, but I should run, and uh, these streams are generally like the goal of this around the watch D and D talk is absolutely is chat. It's it's talking to people in chat about D and D. So I'm really glad you came. Um, to say hey man, I'm going to get off and grab some food. Yeah, I need food too. Got to refuel. Great stream. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, I hope you come around again because chat is the main reason that I do this uh, around the watch D and D talk. And this, like I said, is what I'm doing until I start doing the streams. I'll probably keep doing this one too, but until I start doing a campaign and all that. Awesome talking to you, man. And I really do look forward to you getting getting yours online and I'll, I will check out your stream for sure. And thanks a lot, man. Really good. Great seeing you. And everyone, thanks for anyone who's watching this and or for anyone that watches because this will be going, it's going to be available on my Twitch, but it's also going to be available. I'm going to upload it on my YouTube so you can watch it there. If you have any comments, you can do the comments there. Or if you want to tweet me, uh, my my uh, uh, my uh, social media stuff is, is, is uh, down below on this uh, site, I believe. And so you can always tweet me. And if you have any suggestions for any kind of D&D um, &D talk, yeah, take care, man. Great talking to you. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to end it. Um, like I said, these streams do run longer when I get some, actually get some people in chat. So I'm loving it. That's the goal of this whole thing. And uh, I had a nice long one, about an hour long. Because most of these are about 12 minutes. But last week I had, I had one that was an hour because one of, one of the people I met on here was on and we were talking. That was great. You can check that one out. That was, uh, I think that was episode five last week. You can, if you want to see uh, a really a conversation with one of the people in chat. And then... Um, Alan is awesome. So yeah, he's, uh, I'm excited to see his stuff and hopefully we'll get to play D and D some point. Cause I have always wanted to play with him. All right. Enough of all that. Thanks for coming and checking it out. And hopefully I'll get these glasses fixed. They're getting new ones soon. So I don't look, you know, damn strange. All right. Take care.